Huh? Oh. When I grew up, I was born and grew up in Momela. It's a national park, you know. Yeah. There were a lot of animals like uh, elephant being the largest. But there's one animal in particular. And people did not want to mess around with, mess up with. It was honey badger. It's small. It's about that high. That fat, but that long. It's got claws that big, and the teeth that big too. Small head, but it knows no fear. The word fear is not in his, his vocabulary. Uh, many hunters from Germany usually would come to Tanzania and all you need to ruin their day is to say, hey, there, they will go back in and they will not come out. They will never go out that day. It's bad to go when, uh, when, when, when you hear the badger. They were scared of him that badly. I'll tell you what kind of animal it was. Many, many stories have been told about this honey badger that it goes uh, to African hive, which is around, and it pushes with its back, and then it removes it from its hook where it's hooked it to the tree. And then before the, that falls down, it jumps down, and the hive lands on his back, so it doesn't break. That's that does seem logical, reasonable. I'll tell you, I met them myself, but I'll, today I'm going to tell you about and two incidents. You know, my uncle David, Funa. Hello, Uncle David. You there? And Ailey? And Afra Ailey? Isaiah? Isaiah is his, his firstborn to my uncle uh, uh, David. And Bertha, too. Hi, Bertha. I always. Whenever I went home, I would sing with Bertha. And then the Kirwa husband, hi there. This is about, and the Kirwa is about your father in law. As much as it is about the other people. You know, he raised the chicken. And one day, he got up, he found a chicken dead. He went inside another and another they found 30 chicken dead. I mean only the head was chewed off. He said, oh my goodness, what kind of animal is this? So spiteful. What does not need a, a whole chicken, maybe two or three, maybe it will be full. Then he won't have to kill all these 30 just eating the head. Must be a leopard or something. So he went inside, he took his spear. He had a mbulu spear. And they don't want to be called mbulu now, I was told. They have to be called uh, Iraq, Iraq people. We live in the northern central part of Tanzania. So he came with the spear. The spear has got the only one side has a blade, the other side doesn't have anything, just long stick. Not like a Maasai, which has got metal on both sides. So he went running. He came to the chicken house. He saw some dust coming off somewhere. He went there and waited. Suddenly here comes this little thing. Wait, huh? Is this what he did? He went after it. He went with his both hands like this. It went to the floor. 
they could not penetrate the thick skin of Anabad. So I pulled and the blade remained on the ground. <laughs> was mad. He ran after it. He hit it. Bounce it. Boom. The thing now got mad. That little guy, he can fight. He kills a buffalo. He chewed off the he chews the private parts off and then waits for the animal to bleed to bleed to death. So but for human, he doesn't know where the private parts are because human uh, different, they walk upright. So it's coming, he got, but he can figure out from the legs. He came, he jammed, he got here, the guy kicked. He kicked, he went, now is a fight now. He started moving backward, he kicks it, he falls there, it's back here. Falls there, it's back here. Kept on moving backward and fighting, fighting, fighting. He's getting tired and sweating. He fell down and because he stumbled on a banana tree. And stumbled by a banana tree. As he fell down, the thing got him here. And he fell. Close enough. Took a chunk over there. And he remained ah, ah, crying there. And the thing was gone. He never messed up with Hanna Badger again. Uh, the second incident I remember of Hanna Badger is Rolf, Rolf Trappi. He had gone with some people uh, to hunt and then on the way they said, Wanna please, could you kill us some porcupines? We like to make porcupines too. Okay. You show me where they are. There are some caves around here. They're usually there. So they went there. As soon as they got there, they had a fawn of a deer crying underneath. Said, Oh, this must be a leopard. Yeah, give me a leopard. He went on the other side. He said, Okay, you go inside and scare him to come this way. Make Make a lot of rattle and noise so he can come this way. So he waited on this Saturday. He thought this is going to come this way. He came all right. But it was not a leopard. It was a little thing. And a badger. He looked at this. He thought, huh, this, waste my blood on this. Went with his gun. Back. Boom. Oh, oh, the guy now got mad. He came after him. <laughs> now he can't even shoot him because he's already here. He kicks him. He comes back. Kicks, he comes back. He kicked and kicked. Finally, I scream. He said, I'm getting tired. The mama. I called his mama. Please help. Please help. He said, kicking and kicking and kicking. And his mom came and said, boy, help. What can they do? They can't get close. The guy is kicking, kicking around and things jumping on him. Finally, the mother came with the camera. Wait a minute to hit with the camera on the head. The camera broke. She just sat down there and started crying as she saw her son sweating and said, Mama, I can't hold it on anymore. Finally, he just passed out and that thing came and took a chunk here and ran off. When he came to, he was bleeding, his mom was Trying to stop bleeding, sewing on him. Oh man, he had to go home and nurse his wound. Now, Rolf, you say, hey, we call him uh, Mr. Fist, Mangunde. Mangunde, hello, Baja. He goes back in, he won't come even come out. Mangunde will never go out if he knows there's any honey badger from that day. He learned his lesson. So, if you are in Africa and you see a honey badger, whom I've only seen once, after hearing all those stories, what would you do? I 
have only met met hundred badge once in my life. What would happen if you met hundred badge after I told you this? Well, imagine I was told and told things it did since I was little. And now, at one time in my life, I was in a boarding school. I'm coming home from school. Stopped at uh, the junction of Ki, uh, King Ori, which is between, uh, which is near Kia Junction. Kilimanjaro International Airport on the north roadways of Africa and I'm going up to Kingori. I have two suitcases. I'm walking. Suddenly there's a it was a full moon. I could see the silhouette of beehives and there are some things there. So I think it could those be honey badgers. As a boy, I thought I forgot. Well, yeah, I'm going to kick them. Let me see what they will do. I threw a stone to them. They came down. There were there was not the only one. There were three of them, and they're all coming after me. I looked up. They are here. Boy, I took off. With now the problem is I have these two suitcases and I'm running like I'm carrying nothing, running for my life. Paku 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 until oh, I ran out of energy. I'm going, well, what do you think happened? Do you think they caught up with me? You tell me. What do you think happened? Did they get my suitcase? Did they get my food? What happened? You'll finish the story. Thank you.